Knox High School. I chose Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech, Eulogy for the Martyred Children. This speech was delivered at the funeral of three children, Addie Mae Collins, Carolyn Lee McNair, and Cynthia Diane Wesley, who died in the Birmingham, Alabama bombing on September 18, 1963. When I first discovered this speech, I didn't know there was a bombing, which ultimately killed four children and injured 23 others. As I read through his speech, I was moved by the power behind Dr. King's words and the affection he showed for these girls. I want to learn more about the bombing and about these girls. While researching, I found an interview with Sarah Colin Cox, who was Ad Ma Addie's sister and just a mere 12 years old at the time of the bombing. She recounted her memory of that morning. A memory of three girls in a church basement whose only concern was a bow on their dresses. Three innocent girls who weren't far from my age at 14, 12, and 11. I chose this speech because it's not just a eulogy for these martyr children, but it's a testament of respect for sacrifice, a call for communities to come together, and a remembrance that hard times shape hard choices. This afternoon, we gather in the quiet of the sanctuary to pay our last tribute of respect to these beautiful children of God. They entered the stage of history just a few years ago, and in the brief years they were privileged to act on this mortal stage, they play their parts exceedingly well. Now the curtain falls. They move through the exit. The drama of their earthly life comes to a close. They are now committed back to that eternity from which they came. These children, unoffending, innocent, and beautiful, were victims of one of the most vicious and tragic crimes ever perpetrated against humanity. And yet, they died nobly. They are the martyr heroines of a holy crusade for freedom and human dignity. And so, this afternoon in a real sense, they have something to say to each of us in their deaths. They have something to say to every minister who has stood silent behind the safe security of stained glass windows. They have something to say to every politician who has fed his constituents with the stale bread of hatred and the spoiled meat of racism. They have something to say to a federal government who compromises with the undemocratic practices of Southern Dixiecrats and the blatant hypocrisy of right-wing Northern Republicans. They have something to say to every Negro who has silently accepted the evil system of segregation and has stood on the sidelines in a mighty struggle for justice. They say to us all, black and white alike, that we must substitute courage for caution. They say to us that we must be concerned not merely about who murdered them, but about the system, the way of life, the philosophy which produced their murderers. Their death says to us that we, we must work passionately and unrelenting for the realization of the American dream. Now I say to you in conclusion, life is hard. At times as hard as crucible still. It has its bleak and difficult moments. Like the ever-flowing waters of the river, life has its moments of flood and its moments of drought. Like the ever-changing cycle of the seasons, Life has the soothing warmth of its summers and the piercing chill of its winters. And if one will hold on, he will discover that God walks with you, and that he is able to lift you up from the fatigue of despair to the buoyancy of hope, and turn dark and desolate valleys into sunlit paths of inner peace. Thank you.